Well, there's the first run of the first bifiler stack pancake coil I made. It was running pretty high in the current, about 2 amps. Uh, I was running on the batteries. As you can see, I've got 39 volts in. Um, dropped down to 36 something while on load. So about 60,000 RPM out of that one so far. Still got to work on tuning it. Some nice bright LEDs back there. I'm going to add uh, a couple more banks. See how many it will tolerate. But I've noticed one thing that it, it seems to run better or faster with the LEDs as a load. Okay, so I've got a little bit more to add. Uh, so far, I haven't hit that magical number I've been shooting for, uh, 90,000 RPM. Um, that was off camera that I set that record, so it's really not an official record. I guess it would be an unofficial record. My official record on camera and on uh, video um, is 76,000 RPM. I don't want to appear anal retentive but I probably do um, shooting for that number again but it's only because I know it's possible so I'd like to be able to reproduce that at least and there might be a couple things holding me back uh, number one the controller I did that 90,000 RPM with the controller but since then I added some overhead to the controller um, with the display and keypad, um, most notably the display and the updates I'm doing to the display with the tachometer. Um, some may have noticed that there's a little kind of stall periodically and that's the uh, tachometer updating on the screen. There's a interrupt service routine I wrote to do that. So I'm going to first try and eliminate some of the overhead in the software and see whether or not that does it. Um, if it doesn't, um, I'm going to take one of the three remaining sets of single wire pancake coils and I'm going to reduce the number of turns. Okay, so the water pump kicked in. I guess I'm just going to deal with that. Um, I'm going to reduce the number of turns uh, to be equivalent to the original record setting coil. Because that one was about an inch and a half in diameter. 13 coils like I have now, but only an inch and a half versus the two inches I have right now. Now it may have been that I'm just not getting it tuned right, the, the hall sensor in the correct position. Uh, all the plants and stars might have been lining up just perfectly when I hit that 90,000 RPM. Um, so it was just tuned perfectly for that moment. And it might be really difficult to try and reproduce that. But I, I think it's possible, so I'm going to keep on shooting for it. Uh, I don't want it to be hold me back forever uh, because there's a lot of things that I want to do. So thus far, I, my single coil or my single wire uh, coil hasn't done it. My bifiler version and, and my uh, Pringle coil hasn't done it. And the quarter inch foil pancake coil hasn't done it either. Uh, that's about all I have. I, I have more coils, but they're going to be the same thing. So, um, I'll mess around with the software and see where I can get with that. And if that doesn't get it, then I'll, I'll try and, like I said, uh, remove, remove some of the turns to get it down to about an inch and a half, one of the single wire versions. I'll sacrifice for that um, just to see whether or not it, it it's, has something to do with that. Because these are two ohm, uh, all these coils that I've made are right around the two ohm mark and I couldn't really tell you what the 
inductance value is off the top of my head, but it's obviously different from that original coil that I had that performed so well. Um, and I know the uh, resistance value of that coil was 1.1 ohms. And I am using the same circuit essentially as what I was using before, the same power MOSFET that gave me all the performance, uh, my, my best uh, performance. Um, so that's all I had to say and thanks for watching.